Once again, we're going to begin with the periodic table of the elements. And so where do these elements come from? All of these different atoms that make up the world that we know. Where were all of these things born? What is their birthplace? What is their origin in our solar system? Well, they come from stars, right? They come from stars where there is plenty of heat and pressure to squeeze them together in nuclear fusion. And then um, that goes all the way up to atomic number 26 again. And then, depending on the mass of that star, of course, it explodes into a supernova. And in that intense heat, we can have the fusion of all the rest of the heavy elements. So we're all made of stardust, right? all comes from the stars. Okay, now, our title today is compounds. If we think about that periodic table, we have 92 na naturally occurring elements here in our solar system. Uh, and on our planet. And if we look around this classroom, or you look around your room, or wherever you're doing these notes, we know that there are more than 92 different substances. And so the question is this, if we only have 92 different kinds of building blocks to make up substances, how can we have the millions and millions of different substances that we find here in our, in our environment. Well, the reason a meager, and it really is meager, a meager 92 elements can make an abundance of substances is the ability of atoms of different elements to bond together form a compound. So compounds are two or more different, different atoms. So atoms of different elements. Two or more different atoms bonded together to form a compound with unique properties. And this is the key. Water, H2O. H2O is made up of oxygen and it's made up of hydrogen. Hydrogen gas is explosive. Oxygen gas is flammable. Water vapor, is it explosive or flammable? No. So even though it is made up of two elements that are one explosive, one flammable, the compound that it forms is totally unique to the atoms that make it up. Isn't that amazing? All right, so what we're going to talk about today, and we'll talk about this again much, much later in more detail, is bonds, okay, chemical bonds. Um, so the force that holds atoms together in compounds so the force that holds O, H, H, this thing that's designated by this line, this force of attraction between hydrogen and oxygen and hydrogen and oxygen, that attractive force is called a chemical bond. Now for what we're going to do over the next week and a half, we just need to have a real quick overview of the types of chemical bonds. And again, we will go into a lot more detail later. There are three basic types of chemical bonds. And they are based um, right now, simplistically, 
they are based on the nature of the element, meaning is the element, uh, are, the, are the atoms metals or are the atoms non-metals? Metals, non-metals, a covalent bond is formed by two non-metals. So that's a non-metal bonded to a non-metal. And the nature of that bond is that those um, two atoms, two or more, I'll show you in a minute, are sharing pairs of valence electrons. So they are sharing pairs of valence electrons. They might be sharing one pair of valence electrons, two pairs of valence electrons. Um, and we, we call this a molecule. So an example, let's go ahead and look at... Uh, Look at water. Okay, water is held together by two covalent bonds, actually. This hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen and hydrogen are sharing a pair of electrons right here. And oxygen and hydrogen, these two are sharing a pair of electrons. So, we call this covalent bond. And... Um, this compounds that are held together by covalent bonds are known as molecules. An ionic bond, what do I have here? Here we go. Okay, an ionic bond results from attractions among oppositely charged ions. You don't know what an ion is yet, but you will tomorrow. Though you have flashcards that have ions. This sort of bond is between a metal and a non-metal, and it forms a salt. So a typical salt that we know of is sodium chloride. Potassium bromide is also salt. It's also an ionic compound. Okay, so how do we know that water, or let's do as well, carbon dioxide, how do we know that these are held together with covalent bonds, sharing pairs of electrons among atoms, whereas these are held together by ionic bonds, and that is from the nature of a positively charged sodium ion and a negatively charged chloride ion being attracted to one another. Again, coulombic interaction. Um, well, we know that because non-metal, non-metal. And we know that from looking on a periodic table. Non-metal, non-metal. Metal, non-metal, non -metal, ionic. Metal non-metal ionic. No magic here. You just have to look on your periodic table, identify which, um, whether the elements are metals or non-metals, and that will be your answer. Now, I did say that there are three basic types, so what else do we have here? I wonder, I just had an idea about this one. Okay, so last but not least, we have a metallic form. And it forms between atoms of metals. So, pure metal, and it could be pure, like just pure gold, or it could be um, an alloy of metal. So, um, for instance, and I'm sure some of you know this, Gold comes in different carats, like 14 karat gold, 18 karat gold. And what that is referring to is how much gold is actually in the alloy. What do they mix it with? I don't know. Gold is very soft, so you don't want 100% gold in uh, jewelry because it would just bend and it wouldn't be good at all. Uh, it wouldn't hold up. Okay, so alloys are mixtures of metals. And then we also have pure metals. Now... What holds one metal atom to another metal atom? Um, well, that's a metallic bond. And a metallic bond is um, 
the valence electrons are delocalized. So the outer shell electrons are free to move from one metal atom to the next, to the next, to the next. So we think of it as a sea of valence electrons. Okay, they are delocalized. They're not localized on one atom. Okay, they just move around. And this is what gives metals um, their characteristics of conductivity, malleability, ductility, so that they can be stretched without breaking. Uh, they can be pounded, they're malleable, um, with, and they're not brittle. Um, and they conduct electricity as well. If we give them a push, if we give them some voltage, we can make all these delocalized electrons travel in the same direction to produce current. All right. Um, so last but not least, compounds can be represented in various ways. So we have chemical formulas like H2O. That's a chemical formula. We have structural formulas, and what structural formula shows us is the way that the atoms are arranged in the compound. So this basically tells us, okay, we have one oxygen and two hydrogens in this compound. This tells us, well, the oxygen is in the center, and the hydrogens are coming off of that central atom. And then there are three-dimensional models. Can you see it? Here is a three-dimensional model of water. There it is. Okay, we'll be building three-dimensional models. All right, so for now, we're done.